my father got the name. I got the initials. You know. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. I've got the same first name as my dad, and I, right. uh, I so I go by my middle. Um, right. And there we go. It looks like we're good. Boat. I've got the same first name as my. Okay. Um, and hopefully, uh, let me. Okay. Um, and hopefully, uh, let me. Whoops. Okay. Got it all closed up. Um, fantastic. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm Chris Schweitzer, and I'm here. Uh, I'm honored to be here uh, talking with A.G. Smith, the uh, author, uh, illustrator, artist, designer of. Uh, a staggering amount of books, um, uh, many of which I had uh, when I was young and which played a very formative influence uh, on the my output and subsequently my life because, you know, the projects that you take on dictate, you know, a lot of things. So, uh, so thank you so much, A.G., for joining me today. Thanks for asking, yeah. Well, I wanted to uh, to get to know a little bit about your your life and your career and your work, and so to to start off, um, so you live in in Windsor, Ontario. Yes, yes. Um, are you are you Canadian by birth? Did you move there? No, I was uh, born in New Mexico, grew up in North Carolina, and and became a Canadian in '89, I think. Okay, where, where in North Carolina were you? Uh, Eastern North Carolina, Rocky Mount. Uh, Kind of a uh, coastal plain between the uh, between Raleigh and the coast. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So it's, uh, North Carolina has beautiful ocean and beautiful mountains. And we're from the hot, steamy part in the middle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where my my parents are in the uh, my mom's in the mountain part. And uh, oh yeah, nice, uh, nice. It's, it's a really it's a nice area up there. Uh, right. I, I'm not the the world's biggest fan of heat, so yeah <laughs> uh the 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 farther east you go the the harder it is for me but um yeah. now did you did you uh know early on that you were wanting to uh go into this <clears throat> into art professionally i th I think yeah when i when I came out of high school you know you took art in high school and then came out of high school and uh you're kind of kind of guessing around what do you want to do you know and then yeah it, uh Art seemed to be a thing. It was kind of like it combined the things you like to do and the things you're most pleasant doing. And uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I went, went into university in, in art. Mm -hmm. Now, where's East Carolina? Carolina? East Carolina, North Carolina. I got uh, my BFA in East Carolina in 67. I got, you know, came out of East Carolina. Now, did you did you concentrate in drawing or commercial art or painting or what was your what was uh, your first? undergraduate was printmaking and sculpture and in graduate school was printmaking and drawing. Graduate school was at Iowa University of Iowa. Four now, years after. Did you find that the the, the sculpting did did you sculpt representational stuff or was it more abstract? Uh, no, well, you know, we did we did everything, but then you know, it was combination of I always like architecture too, you know. So a lot of the sculptures I did early were kind of architectural structures, but also we had to do figure modeling, you know, portraits and that kind of thing too. You had, you know, the range. Yeah. Did now now did did that help you with with better understanding the volume of your drawings when you when you started doing that, or was that always something that you were comfortable with? I, th I think I was always comfortable in both things, you know. You were because you're uh, it probably helped in the three D a bit, but. Uh, the uh, I never really thought about it. Tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. um, now, now, how did you how did you first get into uh, get into publishing? What what were you illustrating first, or did you jump straight? Well, into I, I started out. You know, can you when I came out of graduate school, you know, you kind of life just takes its course. You know, so what do you do to make a living when you get out of graduate school? You know, one of the obvious things back in this was in the early 70s, 70, 71. I, I I got you applied for a teaching job, university teaching jobs, and the first job I applied for, I mean, got I got a job at Moorhead State up in Eastern Kentucky. Yes, sir. And spent two years up there in Eastern Kentucky teaching printmaking and drawing, and uh, I really liked teaching. I didn't like the meetings and administration. Yeah, <laughs> and I, that was the uh, so anyway. I, I went to came up to uh, Windsor to um, got a job. The next job after that was a sessional job, which it means uh, teaching course by course. I was teaching like 12, 18 hours a week, but you were still a sessional, but you didn't have the meetings and you didn't have the you know the administration. So uh, that was that was that was better. But I did eight years here 
and again, printmaking and drawing. And uh, then but about halfway through that, I really was, I enjoyed doing the work because I, you know, when, when you're teaching, you're walking behind, walking around behind the students and saying, you know, this line here and talking to them about their, their work. But you'd really rather be doing it yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I was much happier to be doing it than I was that. I was, yeah, you know, I tried to do the best job I could, but I was, but half, but there was a person on the faculty at University of Windsor at that time, and uh, she was teaching creative drawing with Joyce Carol Oates. And uh, she was a writer and she'd done a number of books and she wanted me to illustrate a book of poetry for her. And this, so she no, had she, a- she was, a, she was an art teacher before she was- No, a, she was a literature, she taught English literature. Oh, she taught English, English. okay, gotcha. You she were teaching Joyce Carol Oates. Oates. She, she okay, was a well-known gotcha. novelist and yeah, whatever. But she yeah. had a reputation. So anyway, she asked me to do this book of poetry and it, she did that. And it was with LSU Plus, Press in Louisiana. And so she did that. But then you, once you got something published, then you could parlay that into something, you know. And so then I uh, tried to pick up more, a little more illustration. And I got a job out in, uh, you, you know, uh, doing a series of children's biographies for a uh, evangelical religious company out in Michigan. And, uh, you know, they were traditional biographies, but, you know, you know, you know, Abraham Lincoln, uh, you know, the Wright brothers, uh, but whatever these character people were, same, the same drawings, but they would always pray before they did their things, you know. So that was the evangelical uh, part of that. So they anyway, I did that for a while. And then finally, at a certain point. I knew you have to make a make a uh, to develop further. You got to move on, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was living in Detroit at that time and and working in Windsor, and uh, but I knew I would have going to have to spend some time in New York if you want to do something in, in this business. You had to do that, mm -hmm. and you can try to do things online and try not. There was no online then. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can try to do things through correspondence, but you really got to be there to be involved in it because. Uh, most of the jobs you get to start with, there's a lot of short jobs, small jobs, magazine jobs, and there's a lot of those kinds of jobs available. But, you know, it took a while to get into book illustration. But once I got, you know, it worked, kind of worked. Yeah. And then I, then I made the contact with Dover and, you know, just that took care of itself. And your 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 Dover output is where I first uh, became familiar with your your uh, your work. Did uh, I'm I'm really curious because a lot of a lot of the the subject matter that you tackle, you know, sort of has a, a through line to it. You know, either architectural or history or, or things along those lines. Is that something that you would approach Dover with a subject that you wanted to do? Well, it was the fir first they approached me because I sent in a you know I sent out to about thirty five different you know, publishers and, and uh, designers and stuff, a packet of maybe 10 drawings. And I, and I called it uh, Art Scientific Archaeological Illustration for Books Published. Anyway, so Dover picked over. I had a couple of, uh, I think probably had a castle drawing or two or something. In, and Dover approached me to see if I could do a book of, uh, I forget what the first one was. Uh, I think it was an architecture book. I think Traditional American Houses Architecture or something. Mm -hmm. I think that was probably the first one. And then they would, but the way it worked was uh, Dover would suggest about half the ideas and I would suggest about half the ideas. And so you did the ones they wanted and tried to, and, and, and then, then you would drop your ideas for the ones that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'd go along with that. And another time you might drop an idea and they'd pick it up themselves and bring it back to you two years from now. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, you had to plant, had to plant the seed, you know. And uh, so that so it worked like that, and you uh, so it became a steady stream of work. And uh, the so I was in New York full time for four years, and I kept an apartment there a couple of years after that. So, but I found that then I didn't really want to. I, New York was exciting, and you know, you, things move fast, and and you 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 like you like that, and you need that. But I never really wanted to live in New York the rest of my life, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm um, uh, moving back to uh, Windsor, and this time actually moving to Canada. I met my wife at the university, mm -hmm. and so moved back to Windsor and in Canada. And uh, but I found out I could only only had to go in every maybe three three months or so. And uh, you know you could go in, take a job in, pick up another job, and and then you then again less and less travel. You could take care of it through uh, correspondence and uh, that. So it was 
you still have to go to New York and keep your contacts up, but uh, yeah, so you could live anywhere. Relationships. Yeah. So you could live anywhere then, really. Yeah. Now, now, um, when did you? So, so the 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 coloring books I assume came first with with Dover. Yes. yes. When did you start doing? And I'm gonna uh, bring up a couple of those uh, okay. really quick. Let me um, full screen. Um, so we've got uh, uh, a number of things. That, so, so you mentioned some of the architectural. Uh, right. pieces and there, there, there were, I, I had a, a, a few of those. Uh, I had all the castle ones, uh, and, and still have quite a few. I have them dear, here beside my, uh, my chair. A few years ago, I, I found that my parents had kept them and I got very excited and brought them back in. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but the, um, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, I see these now, yeah. <laughs> the, the automobile, you do, you do a lot of technical drawings and, and work in here. Um, uh, how how did you go about doing your your research uh, for these? And I know it must have changed project to project. Well, it, it, you know every project. Again, this is what I really loved about the job was the research for it. You know, because each one of these projects you you get to work on it for maybe three or four months. You know, and uh, I love, for instance, uh, you, the one you had up there. You had uh, there was one uh, with the uh, yeah the, the American history of American automobile. And a lot of the Dover things that Dover did, they did tie-ins. And for instance, this they did with Greenfield Village and uh, De Greenfield Field Village in Dearborn, which is where the you know basically the automotive museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know they, you know they have all these. You know, it was like they have everything from steam engines to uh, you know really uh, just uh, you know a huge uh, museum of technology really. And so we did this in a tie-in with them, and they. I worked with a curator there, uh, and he he picked out the most significant automobiles, and and they they supplied me with the photographs and everything to to go with it, and so it was just putting them in uh, some kind of historical context around the the automobiles, you know. Mm -hmm. And and you did uh, also did did a a, a a paper town set for that same. Yeah, Greenfield, the, kind of the, little, the buildings at Greenfield Village. Mm -hmm. And again, that was another project with them. And uh, they, uh, you know, again, they supplied you with all the architectural uh, plans and everything for the reconstruction. I think I still have those plans somewhere. That's and there's be beautiful drawings of those old uh, of the buildings. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, you got to work with that. And you could take the measurements from those. And then uh, my son and I went out one day and walked through and, uh, he was a, he was maybe twelve or something then, and uh, we we walked through and I put him in poses in front of buildings and stuff uh, for, for that you know. So, so you were um, travel sometimes for for the for these projects. Oh yeah, so you know Carnarvon Castle. I went over to Carnarvon Castle in Wales and, and spent a week climbing around Carnarvon Castle. Castle and uh, so that you know you know just you know doing photographs and again get a set of ground plans and you do elevations. You know it was. It, I like I like that kind of work, and but it, was, it did involve it, a lot of a lot of these things involve travel. And this is at Firestone Farmhouse there at Greenfield Village, and uh, yeah, I would have my son. He'd be, pretend to be pitching hay or you know uh, pick, picking something, or <laughs> and uh, so would so, these tie in to be sort of a, a like a perennial in those museum gift shops? Is that sort of where this, the, the gift shop tie-ins was a big part of this because Dover. One thing, another thing I liked about Dover was there was a, it was a one owner company at that time. Hayward Circus started this. He and his wife started this company back in my goodness, must have been late forties or something. But they did. But anyway, so they, uh, but they, it was Dover marketed through the mail. They had catalogs. You once you got a catalog, where you'd receive more catalogs, more catalogs, and they didn't just market to bookstores, but they marketed to uh, individuals, so people would. Or, but the thing is that 40% of their marketing was direct sales. So when you do that, you don't have to when direct sales, you're not, you're not doing, you're not having to have this kind of margins that you do when you're selling through bookstores. And also Dover never did returns. They didn't do returns. So you didn't have to deal with, with that part of it. So they, they were able to make a good business out of this, uh, these extensive catalogs uh, that they did. 
And uh, that was the marketing tie-ins. Now, a lot of these places, uh, you know, they would do uh, – each one of these historic sites and stuff, they, they had gift shops, and they'd market these things through their gift shops. But then they would also – you know, they'd also broaden their markets too. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm getting too carried away with that part of it. Oh, no, no. I, I, I <laughs> interesting because I never really knew exactly how the Dover model was done. You know, the, the books were uh, ubiquitous in our house, you know, we, and yeah. I think it's because we had the catalog. My dad, yeah, was, yeah, the, uh, the, the big, um, sort of, uh, public domain woodcut stuff as he, he was a, uh, uh, church musician uh, for a big Episcopal church. And he would do put those in the programs and things along those lines, old Gustav Dore woodcuts and Albert Durer, yeah. things along those lines. <clears throat> but because of that, he got the catalogs. And then because of yeah. the catalogs, I got the coloring and activity books. Right. right. Um, so I was just, I was just curious because, you know, I, 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 I wasn't, they, they seem so prominent to me um, in terms of something that so many people that I knew had, but I wasn't really sure if it was a if it was predominantly a bookstore presence or just because you always found them when you went to museums or how how exactly it worked. But yeah. um, uh, uh, more of the the castle pieces here. I, yeah. I'm curious about the the uh, the the color plates that are on the the inside covers and yeah. back covers. Did you do the coloring on those? Oh yeah, yeah. They were watered. You know what I would do is I would have I would shrink down the. Uh, the drawings to fit the format they need, you know, the format they needed. And then I would, you know, I would print them on, uh, on, on good stock or sometimes they would print them on good stock and I would just do watercolor and colored pencil for the, uh, for the coloring. Yeah. They, I, I, I always loved the the colors on those and I assumed that was the case, but I, I wasn't uh, yeah, yeah. really sure more of these, these pieces here. Yeah. I just love the, the reflectiveness. I, I, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I would, just spend hours copying those those nights books uh, when I was when I was young. But you you've got a, a lot of sort of anthropological stuff in addition to the historical. Um, uh, are are uh, with with some of these um, that you did? How 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 did you handle the? Uh, I guess did did you have to do uh, many revisions when it came to uh, technical things, or did you usually try to get those on the upfront? I'm I'm curious about process, like the well, you know, it, it, again, you know, the, you're, the, the kind of money they paid, you don't do a lot of revisions. Yeah, you, know, you, try, to, you try to get it. You know, you, you it becomes very predictable after a while. You know how you look at a job and you you kind of can predict how much time it's going to take you. And you can figure whether you're going to do a page a day or it's going to take you two days for some pages. And so you have to, you have to line up. First, you line up your research and get that in order. And then, uh, but no, usually um, the, it was pretty well straight, straightforward. And, uh, you know, you're just, how, I, they're not, not, these kind of things are not a lot, not a revisions. Other books I've done, there were reviews, revisions, more complex books, but these were pretty straight. And, uh, yeah, you, know, you do the line drawings, and uh, you, again, you get a feel for for what you're doing, how long it's going to take. Now, would you on the line drawings? Would you would you do uh, pencils on the board and then erase them after the line? Yes, drawings? yeah, the exactly, ex exactly. I would use first. First, I would you know get the drawing. You know, you you start out with you, you reduce things on the light box photographs if you can get photographs. So mm -hmm. more, some books are more constructed than others, but things you can get photographs of, like the automobiles. Yeah, you, know, you put them on the light box. You, you trace them on uh, on on the light box and get the line quality. One, but you do it all in pencil. You know, like a you know soft pencil, and then you ink it, and you then you erase the lines. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's pretty methodical, really. But I enjoyed it. Were did you do these at a, at a significantly larger scale than the coloring books? Were they were they about the same, same scale? Same scale. Really, like a one to one scale on them. One to one. One to one. Wow, that's something. Yeah. Did, did you use technical pins or or? Yeah, I used the, I used I used the uh, the uh, repeater graphs. You know, okay. the, you know, repeater graph pins. Yeah. A um, couple more of those architecture. Um, you 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 had quite a few things that sort of fell. Uh, it, in my mind, out of your your usual method, especially the stained glass. The stained glass things were just reproducing Tiffany designs. You know, you just it's, this this is these are just job. Now these things, these you know this Viking designs. 
that was that was kind of more interesting. I I, I did a lot of biking stuff, and mm-hmm. that was a northern history is a. a my wife and I went to Iceland a couple of times. This was back in the eighties, and uh, in England, uh, spent a number. Of, I think England, Scotland, Wales, and you know Sweden, Norway. But the uh, anyway, so we. But I had a lot of interest in this and uh, northern mythologies. This is uh, these are these are from I think this is from actually this is from a British Viking piece. I think probably. Uh, East Anglia somewhere, yeah. but yeah, reduce take taking these. This was from some kind of jewel, and so you take these and reduce them to a coloring book uh, thing, and uh, in pattern. Yeah, and, and some of these and some of the pattern things sort of served. Uh, they 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 look to me to be a precursor of some of the stuff that's become very popular in recent years with the adult coloring books, um, with the 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 sort of the 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 less literal. Uh, pages sort of that gives you that, I guess the uh, sort of the the getting very zen and just coloring a piece as a stress reliever. Um, yeah. Uh, but but I I thought these were very interesting. Um, and you 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 occasionally have things like this um, where they yeah, yeah this is these are constructions these are things you had to actually figure out and then do constructions on these because you know. Yeah. And uh, but there's a lot of research. I did I did a lot of castle stuff, and uh, you know 3D and uh, but you know there were there were perennial themes. We did uh, a lot of the little knights in armor, castles, medieval things like that. We did a lot of Egyptian stuff. There there are a lot of Egyptian things we did. We did. I don't know that I've ever seen any of the Egyptian. Yeah, we did uh, Egyptian. Uh, uh, I did I did quite a few. I did. Uh, I did uh, these, these were, I think, these paper, you know, the dioramas where you dioramas with stickers and things. And then uh, we did uh, Egyptian, or we did cut and assemble mummies, cut and assemble mummy cases. Uh, and you'd have these hieroglyphics you did in pattern. And, you know, there was, you know, hieroglyphic gibberish because you were making up these uh, designs, you know. And, uh, but the, the, the Egyptians, Dinosaurs. They could not get enough dinosaurs, mm-hmm. and uh, you were probably beyond dinosaurs when you got into these books. We did a lot of uh, dinosaur books, did dinosaur dioramas. Uh, gosh, but again, I was living in New York at that time, and so you had for the for the Knights and Armor book, you had the Metropolitan Museum of Art has this fantastic uh, mm-hmm. uh, Knights, you know, collection of armor there, and the uh, they also have the museums with the Egyptology uh, things in it. And uh, and also the American Museum of Natural History is there. So the resources in the city are really, you know, that was a lot of the content came out of that. Yeah, um, I I can imagine. I mean, there's some some great uh, some great pieces in in all of those. And uh, did you travel down to to DC very often for for Smith? Well, I did. I did for the for the uh, history of flight. Uh, I remember going down there, and again, that's only. That time it's only a three-hour trip on the train from Washington mm-hmm. from New York, so you know you could go down and, and do that too. But it was I remember going through that the Air and Space Museum when it was at when it was downtown and at the Smithsonian rather than now it's moved out to uh, the suburbs out. What's a, what's a big airport out there? Um, uh, Dulles out near Dulles is where the uh, Air and Space Museum is now. Well, and and uh, that that leads me to what you said about the the cut and assemble things. Uh, I'm really curious about how the the cut and assemble thing started, and how you, um, I guess, how you you figured out how to how to do this stuff. Did you did you initially work with uh, a designer at Dover? Did you figure it out all on your own? How- no, this was the, this was I, I just again this is something I would do when I was a kid anyway. You know, to make these to make constructions like that. And uh, but you know, again, you would go and do the research. I remember that you had the uh, that was uh, Mystic Seaport you had up just now. Mm-hmm. It was cutting the symbol in early American Seaport. And again, and one day, I, one Sunday, I took a train out to Mystic in Connecticut from New York. Spent the day walking around uh, Mystic Seaport, and uh, then you know you got the idea. And I presented this is one of the ideas I suggested to Dover, and then we did one cutting the symbol Main Street, which was a main street in a small town. And I went down to North Carolina to my uh, the town I grew up in, and we did cut and assemble Main Street with all the stores on Main Street, 
and I, and the, uh, the the names of the people were someone with the actual stores down there, and others were. I remember a lawyer's office. I, a friend of mine was a lawyer. I put his name on the law office. Uh, <laughs> but you know, this is the you know we did a, a farm. Uh, you know, various things. And again, the Greenfield Village things. Now, I think the the, the Main Street and some of the other things. Um, those were done in. Uh, HO scale to be able to be used. Yeah, they were eight, there, there were four of them. I think we did four of them in HO scale. And so we would set one, another part of the job was to set up the dioramas for the photograph. Mm -hmm. And so you had to do a setup so you could, uh, so it could be photographed. So, and so we, now this, you see this castle in front of you, the Crusader Castle. And, you know, I had a small thing, just maybe it was probably. 24 by 24 that the castle actually sits on. But we would go to a, the art director in Dover and I would get, take a, and we'd go to the photographer, the guy was gonna photograph the covers. And uh, he would uh, set, we'd set things up in the studio. So you see the back of the mountains in the background there, the, the, the horizon, that's cat litter. You know, <laughs> so, we, <laughs> so we set the thing up on a table and you needed, you know, that one, you need to have some distance, you know. Uh -huh. So we went across the road to the you know to a store and got a couple bags of cat litter, put that across there, and uh, but in me he was also took photographs of uh, of uh, cookbooks. This guy and me he was a and his wife was a food stylist, and she would make us lunch while we were doing these photographs for the book covers. So that was a very pleasant part of the job too. Um, uh, that's that's really something. These are uh, the the crack de chevalier is not one that. Uh, I had as a kid. I had the the long one, the um, Canogan Castle. Canogan yeah. Castle. Uh, yeah, I, I thought this one was was beautiful. You did uh, 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 these really intricate things. This uh, the this carousel just fascinates me. Yeah. Um. Uh. And the the degree of mistakes that uh uh I, I'd be likely to make in trying to to put that together. But, um, but these books were really beautiful. So when you did these, these plates, would you do them all on one page or would you do each piece separately? All, all, all these were, these were all on one page. Yeah. Yeah. And they were done same size. They were done same size. all in the, mm -hmm. all in the, Yeah. That, that's but the carousel, the carousel again was fascinating because how to get that thing cantilevered that you, know, you take it, you've got a tube and this whole thing's going to spin on a tube. You got to have it turned. So uh, you had the things cantilevered out on this table, the, the a bottom table, and then the the roof of it is suspended on top of the tube. So you had to to calculate that structure, make it so it would work. And so I went down to, again to Central Park in New York. I got up and looked up under the bottom of the of the carousel, and they, and then I took a ride around the carousel, looked at the uh, you know the structure of the roof. So that but that I think we did it. We'd also did a Ferris wheel. And yeah. I remember the first version we did of the Ferris wheel. I, 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 two weeks of work, I balled up and threw in the garbage can because mm -hmm. it was you, you know you, that, that structure wasn't working, or you could make it work, but it wouldn't work so that the person doing it could do it. You know, you had to make it so the person could actually assemble it. Yeah. That's that's been the, the the hardest. I've been doing more three dimensional stuff and. There's there's plan and, and we did one larger piece and it it cuts into you know the the time profit considerably when I feel like I have to assemble it before sending it out because I'm I don't have the confidence that my design has been simplified enough that yeah the customer can do it so it's I, I imagine that's got to be a really difficult balance is is that that how much trust can you put in the 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 person to be able to accomplish what you've given them. Well, that's it. the Carnarvon Castle. I remember you know, again doing that, and I had a, at that time I, my nephew was uh, twelve or thirteen, you know. So I had him, I gave him you know a copy of black and uh, black and whites on cardstock, and I had him do it. And he, he was twelve, and he he was, but he was a fairly he like he could focus like that. Now my son, he's he would never put it together, and he's forty five, you know. So, <laughs> but he he didn't have that focus to do that. But you know, uh, people who have that focus will. And I've seen some intricate models. You probably have too, paper models from Europe and stuff. That uh, they're they're models of battleships, paper models of battleships and things that uh, I can't imagine. You know, they design. And, I met I met some of these guys who did that. We had a, a there was a group in Washington. We meet every uh, 
tr traditional papal model uh, builders and designers and people who are just enthusiasts. We'd meet once a year for two or three years in Washington like that. And, uh, again, and, uh, you know, just show each other what we're doing. Yeah, pardon me, I'm, I'm rambling. No, no, I, the, the, the ramble is the part that, that's, that's <laughs> most interesting to me. Yeah. Um, did 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 uh, did you get inspired by seeing some of their other some of the the, the work that these folks were working yeah, on? Yeah, well, you, you know, there's a, there's a company in uh, in Germany, Schreiber Schreiber Bogen, uh, which is really you know Schreiber, Schreiber Publishing, but the uh, they have been doing these things since uh, lithography began almost. Mm -hmm. You know, this was like probably the 1850s or so. They had been making paper models of some kind. You know, they were really a lot of them were simple and Victorian kind of things. But the, uh, the the more and more they got very intricate, some of these European uh, castle books, and uh, and then you know there, I, I, I think I saw uh, there was a, a paper model of a Russian airplane that they it was, it was a Russian company, but anyway this thing this paper model was like huge and structurally sound. I was amazed at that uh, them working that. Mm -hmm. And these are the plates from Carnarvon, yeah. And and I also uh, you um, so so you would uh, unless otherwise credited you would write the essays about the, uh, no, the things that were in no, there. no 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 I didn't I didn't write the essays uh, guys most most of those were written in was were by uh, Stanley Applebaum at Dover he was the editor you know editor there and he would write these he was also a guy of great historic knowledge and stuff and he would write the he would write the essays. And I did. I wrote. You, you had to write the instructions yourself, of course, because mm -hmm. you know it was tab tab A and slot B, and that was a tedious process to you know to write. And, and you had to draw the instruction plates too. So would you would you do sort of uh, when you were initially building the prototypes for these um, using I assume uh, cardstock or something? Yeah. Like that, um, would you have drawings on the the cardstock when you were first doing it, or did you just fold until you found the design that you liked? No, I would lay out each side. You know, you say you would, you would, you know, you calculate the height of the building in the scale you were using to, you know, and get the shapes. Then you would, uh, then then you would, you would just lay it out and you see how it would best easily construct. But it also had to fit on the page. You know, that getting it fitted on the page and you've got sixteen pages or whatever mm -hmm. to uh, to work with or eight pages, whatever the job was, and. Uh, these ships were made, were really uh, difficult jobs, but there are what what they call ghost models. You know, I, I, I call them, people have called them they're like ghosts of these projects. So in my garage up in the attic, there are like these paper models, white paper models mm -hmm. of the castles, the carousels, the ships, and uh, that are in the in the white stage because you would you would lay it all out, construct it in that stage to see if it worked, and. Uh, that that was uh, again. That we did the Mayflower. I remember going out to Plymouth, Massachusetts, and you know, you 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 had plans to work with, but walking around on the reconstruction of the Mayflower out there, just to uh, uh, you know, get a feel of it and, and doing those things. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got some train stuff. Were you ever a model oh, yeah. train enthusiast, um, uh, or did did the did the the paper stuff? satiate whatever uh, model building you you felt compelled to do well well th this this was a uh, I think this is probably one Dover suggested to as an old-fashioned train and I think that was no I, I I've always liked trains when I, was, I grew up in a railroad town Rocky Mountain was a railroad town and uh you know my father and grandfather worked for the railroad and so uh yeah I, I've always liked trains I I think I, I've got them uh on old HO train on my mantelpiece now. Um, I'm just making a quick note on the uh, the uh, YouTube channel here to let folks know that if they have any uh, questions, um, um, uh. Yeah, so they're just. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm curious as to to whether or not. Um, uh, well, well, two things. One, uh, I, I'm curious about the. Uh, um, 
sort of the, the, the logistics of doing this from the publishing side of things. Were these uh, for higher books? Did you do them? At, were they royalty based? Like, uh, no, no, Dover was, there was no royalties at Dover. You know, it was all for, you know, for hire. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you, you know, you, you, you made the contract and what you got paid, you know, was what you were going to get. You, know, so yeah. you had to count, you had to calculate your time mm -hmm. um, based on that. And Dover calculated it based on, on, on that too, you know. And the, but the only residuals you would have from this were, would be that if Dover sold the rights to do a, any of these things in part to another company, you know, you would get half the, you would get half the, from what the, the rights were. So you, that was the only residual. The other part of the contract was if these things ever go out of print for more than six months, uh, you know, you have the right to ask them to republish or anyway, the, those things, that, but I knew I was only going to get this amount of money. So yeah. you have to bargain. If you're shy, this is not a business to be in if you're shy. Because <laughs> you have to, you know, you have to not be afraid to ask for a raise. And, and, and they'll either give it or they won't, you know. Yeah. But uh, you have you can't be shy in this business. Yeah. Even when I even when I'm doing something royalty based, I always look at it strictly from the advanced standpoint because yeah. you never know if you can see anything more than that. So it's uh it's always worth it. Um, the the, uh, the the dioramas. I imagine these were these were big with the with with students who were doing school projects and things along those lines. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, teachers teachers love these. And um, anyway, these are a couple more that I did. Uh, these are things I did in Canada. We did. I did a number of books in Canada. Uh, you know, we did a series called Discovering uh, Discovering Discovering Canada: The Native People, the Vikings, the Great War. Uh, so also, so you, I, I, I've learned three versions of history. I grew up in the South, and we learned Southern history. Then I lived in the North, and I knew I, I found out Northern history was quite different. And then I moved to Canada, and I feel, found out that was different still. So, you know, uh, you know we have, you know, the uh, Great War. You know, that was World War One, of course, mm -hmm. and and here, and uh, but. And the, Couple of books that were really I enjoyed doing. Well, this was, these were two that actually we had to write and and do the text and everything and, and the research. Well, this was what, what time is it? A kid's book about the concept of time. And uh, this this one they ended up publishing in six different countries. So the uh, and it had a long long life. And this is another one we did called uh, Where Am I about the concept of place. So uh, this these were things that. Uh, you know, actually had to write, and those those things you get royalties from, mm -hmm. and the, I, I got a thing from China royalties from China last week on the uh, what time the what time is it? Mm -hmm. Those so are they, 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 yeah, they, they, I, I noticed yeah. with the uh, with the the Canadian history books, and let me um, uh, bring those up here. The the Discover Canada. Um, so was that is that the uh, let me bring this back up here. Um, Was was this something that um, was uh, exciting to you to get to work on it, being sort of in your in your neck of the woods, or uh, well, I, I, that was my interest? I think because I was because I was here, and I was spending a lot of time in Toronto anyway. Now I didn't do the cover painting. There were three of these I didn't do the cover paintings for. Uh, these the first three. This one I did the cover painting for mm -hmm. the loyal refugees, and the loyal refugees were were the. Uh, Tories that were uh, when after the American Revolution, uh, they ex if people didn't take a loyalty oath to the new country, mm -hmm. they were exported. So you know they were. I think there were thirty thousand shipped out of uh, New New York on about two several hundred ships uh, that shipped out, and they end up a lot of them in Nova Scotia, some in Ontario, but mostly to Nova Scotia uh, mm -hmm. from. They call them the, the loyalists, and. Uh, we called them the Tories, and Benedict Arnold was a hero here and mm -hmm. was a traitor in the U.S. You know, so the history is just and the. We got one called I think it's called the uh, the Defenders. This is the you got the Defenders. That was the War of eighteen twelve. Mm -hmm. You know, and we were, we had all been brought up this in you know the the British burned Washington, but two weeks before that the, the uh, Canadians I mean the uh, Americans had burned Toronto, so Fort York and Toronto. So there was a different. Just different uh, take on it, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, yeah. 
it, it's interesting. It, it gives you perspective when you see different histories. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, I had a chance to go up and, um, and uh, go through sort of uh, Toronto and Guelph and some other places with, a uh, historical cartoonist who lives up in that neck of the woods. And he took me to a few battleground sites and a fort. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It was just, it's, it's really something, cause it's not something that really gets touched on much here because uh, it could, you know, justifiably be viewed as a, as a national embarrassment on our end. Um, uh, but um, yeah. So, so are, are, uh, I have not seen the, the interiors of these um, are these, Color plates, are they black and white? Um, on the, uh, oh, AG, are you still there? I think it's frozen up a bit. Um, Let me see. It looks like that internet connection has uh, frozen up. So um, let me see. I think it's just me for a moment. Um, uh, we may be calling it, but if anybody, uh, like I said, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. If not, then we will... Uh, uh, close this up, but um, thank you all so very much for joining us. Uh, it's been a great opportunity uh, talking with uh, A.G. Smith about uh, his work and uh, his career. Um, and I hope that if you are not familiar with his books, that you will uh, seek them out, track them down, uh, especially if you have kids in your life and want to share uh uh, history and um, uh, uh, architecture and things along those lines. So um, uh, thank you guys so very much for, um, uh, for coming out and I think uh, we will call it. So thank you.